Hey everyone, Leander here with my first ever Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today I want to teach you how to set up a first person character which looks similar to this. We will go over the steps of setting up the camera so that you can look around and see your own body. And then I'll show you an easy way to make the character look wherever the camera is looking. After that we will set up turn in place animations for more realistic turning. You can download the project file for this by following the link in the description of this video. Fair warning, this is an intermediate difficulty tutorial, as I won't be explaining everything step by step to keep this tutorial relatively short. If you want to learn the basics of Unreal Engine, I highly recommend checking out other videos on YouTube to get started. There's a lot to cover in this video, so let's get started. We want to start our project using the third person character template by Epic. If you already have an existing project, you can import a content pack like this. It's important to use this template instead of the first person character so that we have a completely animated character to work with. Hop into the third person character blueprint and change the boom length to minus 20. Attach the camera boom to the head of the skeletal mesh and zero out the transforms. This makes sure that the camera boom follows the head of our character. Pause the animation of the character to move the camera boom into place. Make sure to unpause it afterwards so that your character can still animate in the game. Scale the camera down to make it easier to visualize where it will be in the end. I'm also changing the FOV to a value of 100, which I feel like works better. And lastly, let's change the capsule radius to a more reasonable value, something like 30. You want to make sure that your camera is still completely inside the capsule even at the end of the idle animation so that it can't clip through walls in the game. Now we've got a basic first person character set up. To fix the issue where you can see inside your own body, we're going to set up a system that will allow the skeletal mesh to follow the camera movement. For this, let's open up the animation blueprint and go into the event graph. We want to drag off the try get pawn owner node and get the control rotation from it. This gives us the rotation of the camera, which we will use to deform the bones of the character. Let's create a new function, which will handle the bone transforms for us. I will call this function getLookRotation. I will set the function to be a pure function, which will allow it to run without an execute pin. Let's add a rotator input and call it lookTargetRotation, as well as a float input called interpolationSpeed. Now we need to create an output called bone rotation. This one should also be a rotator. Now break the rotator input into its individual float components. We want to add 90 degrees to the roll and pitch values and make a new rotator with these values. This is so that we can control the offset of the bone transforms later on. With these values it should work directly with the default Unreal Engine 4 character. If you want to use a different character you might have to change these values depending on your skeleton. Now let's create an rinterp2 node and connect the target result. For delta time, we can simply type in get world delta seconds to get the value for it. And our interpolation speed should be the value from the function. Now let's create a new variable. This one should be a rotator called head rotation. We want to plug it into the current input for the interpolation node and plug the output result into the bone orientation of our function. With that done, let's head back to our event graph, plug in our function and connect it with the control rotation node. Now we want to set the head rotation using the end result of our function. For interpolation speed, let's choose something like 10 to make the bones smoothly rotate. Now we need to jump over to the animation graph to make sure our bones are actually affected by this. Create a transform modify bone and set it up to only use rotation. Set the rotation mode to replace existing and in world space. Let's connect it up and create four more copies of this. Each of these nodes will allow us to affect one bone in the body of our character. For the first node, let's set it to use the spine 01 bone. The second one, spine 02. Third one should use spine 03. A fourth one, we want to use the neck bone. And for the fifth one, we're going to use the head. Now let's grab our head rotation and plug it into the rotation value for each of these nodes. If you compile now, you can see that our character is tilted in this weird direction. Let's create a new float variable called look at alpha, which will allow us to tweak this a bit more. 
we want to set the default value of this variable to 1. We want to drag it in and multiply it by a value of 0 0.15 for all the bones except the head. With the head, we want to multiply it by a value of 0 0.4 and plug that in. If you add up all these individual values, you should get to a total of 1, which will make it so that the head is actually completely following the camera as a result. Now this looks a lot better already, but he's still tilted weird. If you give the head rotation a default value of 90, the character will stop being tilted in a weird way and will look a lot nicer as well. Let's play the game now and see what it looks like. Not too bad. As you can see, we're not able to look inside our character's body anymore. But if we turn too far, you can see he's still standing in place and we're weirdly snapping to the other side. So let's make the character turn. For this we need to import some animations and we will get them from Mixamo. If you open up Mixamo for the first time you have to log in, but you can use your Google accounts for example to log into the site. Once we are in Mixamo we can look for specific animations for our character. Let's look for turn. This is the animation I want to use for my game. The reason that this one works well in our case is that the rotation is being counteracted by the animation, which is exactly what we will need to make it look natural. Make sure to download the animations with the skin so that Unreal Engine is able to create a new skeletal mesh from it. What skin you choose doesn't matter unless you want to use it for your game later. For the left turn, you can just choose the left turn animation down here. Another option to get the left turn would be to mirror the right turn animation, which results in pretty much the same. Let's get back inside Unreal and download our animations. I'm going to create a new folder from Mixamo so that I can keep my project structured. I want to only import one animation at first so that I can create a skeletal mesh from it. Make sure to click import animations when importing the animation. We don't need to create a physics asset for this, so you can untick that. And we also don't care about materials, so let's not create new materials and not import textures. And now we can import our left turn animation. Make sure that you uncheck import mesh when importing the animation and make sure that the Mixamo skeleton is selected over here so that you're only importing the animation using the right skeleton. Now we have our left turn and our right turn animations. You can preview them here. I'm going to delete these other take animations because I don't need them for the project. And I will also rename the other animations to make them easier to use. Now we have to adjust a few settings in the Mixamo skeleton so that we can retarget the animations to our Unreal character. We need to adjust the retargeting base pose to fit with the Unreal character as well as set up the preview mesh. It's a good idea to compare the poses between the skeletons to make sure you can match them up as good as possible. Once you're done, switch to the retarget manager and set modify pose, use the current pose. Now let's select the humanoid rig for the retargeting. And to set up the retargeting settings, I've created a bone mapping asset, which can be downloaded in the description. Once you have that downloaded, you can simply load it in here and it will set up all the bones correctly for you. Let's do the same thing on the default Unreal Engine character, but this time we don't have to load in any mapping because it automatically fits. Now we should be able to retarget the animations to our character. Select the mannequin skeleton and select the folder where you want to save your files to. Open the newly created animations and move the pelvis down if the character is floating. Comparing it to the other animations of the character might help. Add a key and click apply to save the adjusted animation. Do the same for the other turn animation. Now go into the animation graph of the animation blueprint for your character. Open the default state machine. In here we need to create two new states, one for turn right and one for turn left. Connect them up with the idle animation in both directions. In the turn right state add the animation turn right and in the turn left state Add the animation turn left. Create two new booleans called turns left, turns right. I had to use this name because for some reason it gave me an error when I wanted to use turn left. In the transitions towards the turn left state, use the boolean turn left. Do the same for the right state with the right boolean. On the transition back to the idle, use the speed variable of the character and check if it is greater than zero. Get the time remaining of the animation and see if it is less than 0 0.05. 
combine them with an OR boolean and connect it into the result of the transition. Do the same thing for the other one. Make sure that you switch the time remaining node to use the left turn animation instead of the right one. Now that the animations are set up, we need to tell our character when to play them. For this, go over into the event graph and get the actor rotation. Get the output of the control rotation and use the delta function along with the actor rotation to get the distance from the camera rotation to the actor's rotation. Split the struct pin of this node to edit the individual axis values. Create a map range clamped node with the yaw value to normalize the ranges for easier use. Your in range should be from minus 90 to 90 and your out range should be from minus 1 to 1. Now take the output and check if it is minus 1 or 1. Create a sequence node and create two branches. Set them up like this. If the first one is true, set turn left to be true. If the second one is true, set turn right to be true. For both of them, get a reference to the actor and use the add actor local rotation node to turn the player. Set the Z value to minus 5 for a left turn and 5 for a right turn. Add a delay node with a duration of 1. After that, set the turn boolean to be false. Another thing we can do to determine when the animation stops is to go into our animation and create a notify as soon as the animation is over. Create a new notify and call it end turn. Now create the same one on the other turning animation. Save them both and head into the animation graph. Look for end turn and you should get an event anim notify end turn. If this one fires you want to set both booleans to be false. Hit compile and save and now everything should be set up so that your character will be turning smoothly. And here you go, it actually works perfectly. If you want to preview this better, you can set the camera boom length value back to a value of something like 200. The beauty about this system is that it works really well for first person games, but also for third person games. Feel free to play around with the values of this and tweak them to your liking. There are a few things that could be improved further down the road, especially when strafing or walking backwards, the system breaks at the moment. Maybe I will show you how to fix these issues in a future video if you guys are interested. Again, the link to the final project will be in the description if you want to deconstruct what I did some more. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. This took me quite a while to make, so it would be great if you would like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the bell to be notified when I release another video for you. For more regular updates on my games and other content, you can follow me on Twitter at RealMrSky. My name's been Leander and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!